All right, so we just gonna go ahead and get right into it. I know why you guys are wondering what is this video about. Of course, the title itself explains it very straightforward, and I tried to make sure that that was very possible. That would be very straightforward about what this video is going to be about today. So, with that being said, let's just, you know, go ahead and get right into it. All right. I know. I know you guys have been asking me this question so very often here in all my comments and DMs and everywhere else you could possibly ask me this question. And I totally understand why. You know, I totally understand why. Yes, my top surgery looks absolutely phenomenal and I am absolutely blessed to have found my surgeon during this entire process to not only do my surgery, but as well as keep me in good company and make me look good even after post-op. You know what I'm saying? I, I am grateful for finding my surgeon here in Atlanta, Georgia. I cannot deny that at all. Now, for those who might be new or don't, of course, follow me on social media, a lot of times I get a lot of posts here of people who keep asking me, who is your surgeon? Where is your surgeon located? and honestly i just decided like eff it you know i'm gonna just do an entire video on my surgeon how my experience has been and as well as you know just kind of give you guys a little 411 on her and really how you can find her here if you live in atlanta or even the surrounding states or are even willing to travel to get your surgery done by my doctor so with that being said Let's get right into it. Now, before I give my doctor's information and, you know, give you guys basically what this video is about, all the deets on her, I want to kind of go into my thinking process or my, uh, I don't even know what word I'm trying to use to e explain this. Give me like one second to think of the word. I'm going to say my homework. I had to do a lot of homework prior to actually finding my surgeon that I had to do my top surgery. And the process of that homework really took a lot of months to years to actually find the surgeon to do it. Uh, I had a lot go into this because really I had to meet five requirements for a surgeon specifically that I would need that, that are necessary. Like these are non-negotiables for me. These are things that I had to have had in a surgeon. And yes, I've been extremely picky with my surgery because one, this is a major surgery. I'm not just going to up, you know, and just find the closest and cheapest surgery here in Atlanta. I was willing to break the bank if need be to get the results that I'm looking for. Uh, but then two, it's just really significant for me to have somebody that I can be one comfortable with in my pre-op and as well as of course during the surgery and even even my post-op it was extremely key for me to have those two things and key requirements met um before i just went ahead and just said okay i know that this is the doctor that i want so a lot of months to year took a long time for me to get to the process of finally saying hey i found a surgeon and hey i'm ready to drop this money I'm just saying. So I know you guys are wondering, yes, Mari, why did you have to have five requirements? Well, let me actually break down each of those requirements and let me do a full disclosure here. These five requirements, two out of the three might be very, um, I don't know what the word is, controversial. But in my case, being somebody who is black and as well as trans, there's a lot of things that go in the back end of that. And I wanted to be extremely cautious in choosing my surgeon for a lot of reasons. I don't even have to explain them. But in my case, I felt as though this is the most appropriate way to go about finding a surgeon for me personally, who I felt would be the most comfortable for me. So with that being said, let me just go ahead and break down my five requirements. Number one, they have to be black. I'll just leave it at that. Two, they have to be a woman. The reason why I wanted my surgeon to be a woman was because I felt as though they would understand the woman's body more pre-op and as well as post-op. Now, although yes, post-op, really more top surgery, just, just you get your breast tissue removed, etc. I still felt as though if something was to happen post-op with my body, regardless of whatever happened, that a woman will understand that whatever you know whatever the the possibility of uh defects happening or 
illness is happening. Uh, I just felt the most comfortable that a woman would understand if something was to happen prior to the reason why I can't get a certain type of surgery and as well as after in case anything happened with complications and things like that. I just felt more comfortable with having a woman doctor present and as well as women are more welcoming. I'm not saying that men aren't, but like I felt really like my surgeon was like a long lost aunt that I just never met before. That's how comfortable it was. So it was just a lot of things that went into having a woman doctor for sure. Three, they had to be board certified. A board certification in the medical field is one of the most prestigious certifications that I have. I'm not saying that if you're a doctor currently that you go to now that is not possibly board certified is a terrible choice. It's just like I just prefer the most prestigious and highest ranking of board certifications in the city of Atlanta for any type of body modifications as a whole so that board certification was extremely key for me and i need to make sure that my surgeon had that as well number four they had to take insurance the insurance was key because one i didn't have to pay a lot of money out of pocket i only paid two grand out of pocket out of the probably 30 to 50 grand that probably went into the surgery itself it probably was less than that but i'm just arranging the number i have looked at the bill because i don't owe anything um but I had to make sure that my doctor took insurance because I didn't want to pay a lot of money out of pocket. I don't want to do any GoFundMe accounts. I didn't want to do any, I don't even know what the other ones are called, but basically I didn't want to crowd fund my surgery. I wanted it to be strictly based upon my decision to do it and with my money. I already had the money handy for the down payment, so I didn't really care about paying the two grand, but at least I didn't want to pay five grand out of pocket or more or however much the entire surgery itself would be so i needed a doctor that took my insurance as well which is extremely key and very beneficial which made my surgery even cheaper than what i expected and of course lastly i had to have a doctor that had experience with transgender patients now my surgeon um did have experience with transgender patients before she met me which was perfect for me because it's just more comforting to kind of have a doctor who kind of understands like they don't really question exactly why you're doing this or anything like that. They're actually very extremely supportive of individuals who come to them to get this type of surgery. And the good thing is about my doctor, she was actually, I believe she's certified with WPATH, which is the World Professional Association of Transgender Health. And that's probably wrong, but I'm gonna check it again. Just look right here. I just put it right here. Uh, WPATH, of course, is a transgender health uh, organization that works closely with doctors who are willing to work and assist transgender individuals and look deep into transgender health. They do a lot of research within the transgender community to make sure that they provide us with the best um, information, practices, experiences, whatever other words I could possibly think of to make sure that transgender individuals have the best care overall, just make sure they're in good hands. And um, my doctor was actually following the practices and guidelines of WPATH, which is extremely cool and perfect because it just makes me feel more comfortable that she's willing to look in WPATH go through these trainings, go through these courses, go to these workshops, seminars, keynotes, whatever else that WPATH does to learn more about transgender health and transgender patients. Uh, so that was extremely key. So her having that experience was even a better option. So, I mean, you know, it was just good. And especially because since I kind of study transgender health and the procedures and medical procedures and stuff like that on my off time, it was good to have those conversations with her back and forth to say, you know, hey, this is what I know. What do you know about this? And then we can have that nice, peaceful conversation. Kind of like it was family. This is what I love. This is why I love my surgeon. It was just it was just so welcoming to have her presence there. So the good thing is my doctor met all five of those requirements. Now, let me say this one time, not saying that there isn't a surgeon or black woman, you know, surgeon out there who don't meet these requirements at all. It's just the fact that it was it was like a needle in a haystack for me to find her. Like it took years. Like I remember when I initially started looking at top surgeries, I didn't even see her in the database. I couldn't even find her until recently, like right before I ended up getting surgery, like a couple months before the end is when I actually ended up finding her. So it was good to take the time that I did to research to find the perfect doctor for me. Um, and all that research actually paid off because look at me now. Uh, so she met all five of those requirements. I can definitely say, in my opinion, it was a needle in the haystack to find somebody that meet all five of those, but she did. And I do not regret any decision prior to that. Now let's go ahead and get to the big reveal because I know everybody's like, oh my God, Mar, you're saying all these great things about your doctor, but like we still haven't got a name. I understand, I get it. You guys are rushing me, please. So here in Atlanta, Georgia, if you're in Atlanta, Georgia or any surrounding states or even willing to travel, 
to Atlanta, I would highly suggest, highly suggest that you go to Dr. Capozo. That is K-P-O-D-Z-O. I'm dropping it right here as well. Dr. Capozo at Morehouse Health. Uh, well, let me say the whole thing. Morehouse Health Care. Uh, she actually is housed on Howell Mill, which is kind of downtown-ish of Atlanta. So if you're in the downtown area, that's even better for you to kind of get there, make your appointments and everything. Her entire staff was absolutely welcoming so my nurse was actually Raquel which we actually ended up growing a completely close bond with each other not like talking outside of appointments but you know every time I come in Raquel is, has been like extremely welcoming uh we just you know we was able to really chat and, and laugh it up a lot of times whenever I was coming from my appointments uh this is really most of the reasons why I, I was late coming back to work but uh to kind of deteriorate from that uh uh it was just it was just good to have even not only my doctor be extremely welcoming and nice and like extremely comforting but as well as her team be the exact same way um everybody that i came across with regarding dr Capozo and her and her team they like i said were like extremely welcoming they treated me like family in a sense they just made sure that everything was okay we was able to laugh, kiki, giggle about, you know, just regular life stuff. And it was literally probably, it actually made me very emotional the first couple of times I actually ended up going back and forth to my appointments prior to the post, I mean, prior to me getting my surgery because like I said, I was able to kind of have these conversations with my surgeon and kind of just say like, hey, like this is how I feel. What do you think about this? And she never questioned it. She answered as honestly as she could in the most like very caring way possible. And as well as her team, like if I had questions for the team, they would just be like, okay, let me tell you exactly how you should do this. You know, everything's gonna be okay. Everything looks good. You know, boom, it, it was like, a, it was like, it felt like family for somebody who I've never ever met. And that's what was extremely key for me prior to finding a surgeon is to, to be 100% comfortable whenever I would walk into the office and as well as walk into my surgery, pre-op, post-op, the entire nine. Like everything about Dr. Capozo's team and her practice was absolutely just heartwarming to me from the jump. Uh, so yeah, like I feel like I shouldn't really go too much into it. I can say that um, Dr. Capozo has worked with multiple transgender patients in, in her previous time. So if you are concerned about her not having any experience with transgender patients, she does have uh, experience with them. The consultation time frame might be a little couple months out. I believe I scheduled my consultation probably in June or July or maybe even earlier than that, maybe even March. I don't remember the day of when I scheduled my consultation, but it was definitely a couple months out because that's how booked and busy she is. She doesn't work strictly on just transgender patients, of course. So it's just a matter of trying to just get yourself in as early as you possibly can. I think I have my consultation in September and then I end up having my surgery in December. So you're, you're gonna have a couple of gaps in there for her just because she's in such high demand, which I totally understand because I'm going to show you my three month results now. And if you haven't seen my, my picture on Twitter, you will see it in a second of what it looks like. But um, the like I said, it, it made me very emotional the first time that I met my doc, because like I said, as the time progressed, it was just it just continued to feel like home in a sense. And like I said, since this surgery is so big, my level of anxiety was high before I met her. And as, like I said, the appointments continue to go, my anxiety levels will continue to just go down because it's like, I I'm, I know I'm in good hands. Like, that's exactly how you feel with Dr. Capozo and her team. You feel like you're in good hands. And for me, that was extremely key for me to build that relationship with my surgeon and as well as with her team. Like I said, I didn't expect her team to be super nice. Um, like I said, Raquel was with me from head on. She was like, you're gonna be with me for the whole time. So you gotta deal with me. And from then I knew exactly, I was like, this is going to be perfect for me. Like these people are going to be absolutely the best. And like I said, from the jump, once I, once I met everybody on the team, I knew I was like, this is, I know I'm in good hands. So like I said, I, that's, that's, 
all I have on my surgeon. You can find her on social media. I'm gonna have to drop it here because I don't know it off the top of my head. But if you kind of want to see uh, a few of her work, a little bit of her work, my apologies on the transgender community and basically like what she do as a basic practice, just go ahead and check out her socials. Um, as well as please look her up on Google as well. Like don't just base everything on social media. She doesn't post anything crazy. But you know, I do want everybody to still take their time to look into my doctor. Yes, you can use my my recommendation for her from this video of course but i would still like for you all to go ahead and still check her out on google as well so dr capozo this is how you spell her last name and you can look her up and basically if you're in atlanta or surrounding states or like i said you're willing to travel baby you will be in good hands with dr capozo so uh let me go ahead and, and wrap this video up i didn't make it i didn't want it to be long because there's really not too much to really say but um yeah so i know everybody wants to see i know everybody wants to see so let me go ahead and take off my mic and take off my shirt i don't think i'm gonna be able to stand up for y'all because i don't this okay I, I broke my tripod so you gotta bear with me on height difference right now but um let me let me take all this off real quick and then let me kind of give y'all a, a, a quick reveal one time one time for one time and since i don't have nowhere to put my mic i'm just gonna put it right here uh <laughs> or somewhere uh, as you can see here, guys, this is my three-month result of my top surgery. I am working out to get these pecs to be pecking a little bit. I'm a very skinny guy, and my doctor and as well as the nurse said that, you know, this, your your chest area is going to take a long time for it to kind of build up a little bit of some muscle to mask this. It's not horrible. Like I said, I absolutely love it. Uh, as I continue my chest workouts, I think everything will end up coming into play the way I want. So give me about like a year or so months to kind of get it together, guys. Uh, but as you can see here, it looks absolutely amazing. And I absolutely, I, I actually ended up doing a, a, a thank you video for my doctor because she actually had surgery as well. Literally like a couple months after I had surgery. So I, I was able to kind of see her. I was able to see her and follow up and say how much I thanked her in person. So I had to do a video for it. But I absolutely don't regret a thing, guys. Like, my 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 scars are healing absolutely amazing. My body feels amazing. I look amazing. And I literally would not go to anybody else. I wouldn't take anything back. I absolutely love exactly how my chest has turned out. So... Thank you, Dr. Capozo. If you are watching this video or somebody ends up telling you about this video, you know exactly who I am and how to get me. Uh, but I, I greatly appreciate you for all your work and as well as taking the time to do the surgery for me and as well as making me feel like I was at home during your entire, you know, during during the entire time I was with you uh, prior to kind of technically i can still see her guys it's just a matter of like i don't have to go back as frequently as i used to um but i'll probably see her in about a year maybe in six months just to make sure that everything still looks good but like i said thank you doc i appreciate you for all the work you do and as you can see if this video ends up blowing up you know exactly how you get a little bit more of your clientele me you're getting it from me but well, that's going to wrap it up, guys. I thank you all for taking the time to check out this video. I thank you guys for checking out Dr. Capozo because I know exactly that's what you're going to do after this video. Yes, check her out. Yes, book her. Yes, get your surgery done by Dr. Capozo. 1,000% would recommend. I don't know how Yelp reviews work, but if I could give a Yelp review, God damn it, I would do it. Uh, but until next time, guys, of course, you will see me. I'm going to do a video every week. Like I said, I actually have... A speech coming up later this week so if you guys want to tune in it's going to be live registration will be dropped in the chat in the link below or the description below i'm sorry the description below the description below and of course until next time when you see me follow me on social media at mario world that is m-a-r-3 i's w-r-l-d you can follow me or check out my website as well that's www.amarimcgee.com and i'll see you guys next week peace I'm so